recording yes you can start Okay. So today's session is a very, very interesting one. Okay. And I'm sure even when you read Mastering Blood Sugar Swings, you must have thought, okay, what are they going to talk about? Maybe this is going to help me. Of course, this is going to be very helpful for you. Once you understand what are the reasons that uh, cause these spikes, we get to work on them and make them better. Right. So that is what we are looking at. So today our topic is going to be Mastering Blood Sugar Swings. And let's begin. So this is what we are looking at covering up today. So we have a small session on meditation. It's a quick one minute meditation because as is we have a lot of stress coming in on our day-to-day -day life. So we just take one minute from our day and do a quick meditation and then we'll go into the topic. We'll understand first why sugar spikes are not good for our body. What happens to our body during these kind of sugar spikes? So let us first understand that and then we will go into discussing the hacks one by one and Anuja also has a very lovely activity planned for you. So let's start. Okay, so we'll just time for a quick minute. Vidya, Vidya, you went on mute automatically. Is it audible yeah. now? Yeah. Okay. So we will do a quick one minute meditation. We'll just time for one minute. So it's 11.05 now. Until 11.06, we'll do the meditation. All you need to do is take in deep breaths. Okay. So we will just breathe in and breathe out. Okay. So start breathing in through your nose and exhale through your mouth. Right. So let's begin. Okay. So let's start breathing in together. And let's breathe out through our mouth. Okay, please continue doing this in repetition until one minute. So, please continue doing it. So, as you are breathing in, you must be feeling your length expanding, right? And then you'll also feel a sense of letting go. That is what we are looking at. So, and continue doing this, breathing through your nose and breathing out through your nose. So, this is something you can do on a daily basis as well. You don't have to restrict your meditation for a minute you can very well do it for five or ten or even 15 minutes but set aside time to continue doing this so i hope you're continuing breathing in let's breathe in together breathe in let's breathe out okay let's do it again let's breathe in let's breathe out Breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, okay. So I hope all of you make a habit of doing this on a regular basis as well. Okay, so all of you know the benefits of meditation because it does help us in reducing our stress levels, right? And also because of stress, we also notice sometimes that our sugar levels are increasing or they start to spike. So meditation on a regular basis can really help. Okay, so coming to why glucose spikes are harmful. Okay, so let's understand one by one. So from the picture, you're able to understand that when we don't eat balanced or when we have our foods giving a lot of glucose in the body, we see ups and downs happening, right? This could also possibly affect our mood. Sometimes when the sugars are on the higher side, we get irritated very quickly. This could be something some of you have already experienced. Right. Likewise, when the sugars dip, you also see that you are also getting uh, very irritated again. So when you have fluctuations or here we call it the blood sugar roller coaster, we start seeing that our mood gets affected. We see mood swings come in. Right. So how do we manage this? This is what we are going to understand through today's session. So trying to maintain a more flatter curve is what we are looking at. So. Let's come back to why glucose spikes are harmful. So one constant hunger 
see when we are not eating balance let's say we are focusing only on our carb portions maybe let's say some of you said you had sandwich you had upma dosa all of these were things that you had discussed uh, and put on the chat right so these are things which may or may not spike up your sugars depending on the other components on your plate right so let's say we are having only one cup of poha now we are talking about someone who is diabetic right so just having poha it is likely to rise my blood sugar levels so as there's an increase and there's no satiation coming in when i say satiation it means that feeling of fullness right because the carbs are going to get digested pretty quickly and that sugar that increased will also dip down and one once that happens right we we'll start feeling hungry you'll notice when your meals do not have protein in them you're feeling more hungry you're feeling hungry very often right that's something that happens so when we are constantly hungry and this is something a lot of us face we are constantly hungry because we are not eating a very balanced meal and when the sugars go up they tend to dip down and when it does naturally we start feeling hungry there's one more thing i want to discuss which is when we have food that is going to be very carb heavy or carb rich right we have insulin being secreted in order to bring down the sugar spike that has just happened so when that happens when there's a lot of insulin coming into the body we see that it kind of disrupts the hormone mechanism that is already present in the body some of you may have attended the session that we had on ghrelin and leptin which are the hunger hormones right so ghrelin is the hunger hormone only when ghrelin kicks in you start feeling hungry right likewise leptin has to be secreted by the body only then you start feeling full so this is the basic mechanism that happens in the body so when there is a lot of insulin coming in this system gets disrupted so as a result what happens you start feeling hungry because your hormones are in doing what they are supposed to be doing so you start feeling hungry a lot and this constant hunger so balancing your meal is what needs to be done next is cravings so we also notice when we are having very heavy glucose spikes because of the dips that we are craving a lot of food because your body is not feeling satiated right it is not feeling full from what you've already had so because of that constant hunger it also paves way for cravings right when the, your sugar levels are disrupted let's say it is going high it is coming low likewise when it comes low what happens is you start craving right most of us would have seen this happen if we don't plan our meals if we don't have our snack we also notice in the meal that we end up eating a lot more right so that is something that we notice happen so uh, there was also a study conducted in which we see people who had very stable glucose levels right they did not crave much whether they were offered junk food whether they were offered a salad they didn't want to eat it but in comparison to people whose sugar levels were irregular rather on the lower side they just wanted to eat anything that was in front of them so what we understand is maintaining and regularizing our glucose levels is very very important here right then we come to gut issues see gut issues is something very very common when someone is diabetic we see a little bit of inflammation come up it's nothing to be worried about but our goal is to keep the sugars under control once we do that all of these complications also are dealt with right so when the sugar levels are on the higher side it starts impairing your gut lining okay so what happens we might see some disruptions a lot of people might be facing uh, indigestion or a lot of bloating may also be faced so these are some common things that we see when we are having gut related issues right there could be a leaky gut there could be pores in the gut which are leading to uh, your nutrient absorption not being very very well as well so these are things we are likely to see when the sugar levels are on the higher side next we come to chronic fatigue so fatigue so when you are feeling tired it is usually because our sugar levels are on the lower side so if we are going to have any food that is going to be high in sugar let's say for example all i had for breakfast was maybe two bananas let's say i didn't feel hungry so i just had two bananas so what's going to happen i am going to see a sugar spike and it is also going to dip down and when it dips down i am going to start feeling tired right and when your meals are not balanced a lot of people when we feel tired what do we think of ha huh, let me have a glass of glucose water let me have something sweet so that i get that energy that's what we generally tend to think 
but as you do that there's also crash of sugar that happens and when that happens you feel so tired and you go back to that sugar that's how that habit of constantly eating something sweet also develops right so being constantly tired is something that will happen when our sugars are not in place rather when sugars are very high and then when it dips you start feeling tired through the day this is something that is going to happen next we also see poor sleep so uh, maybe some of you could have experienced this also so in your sleep if your sugars are dipping very low also you might wake up with a pounding heart right this is something that you are likely to see happen so that's why that balance in sugar needs to come in that's why we emphasize so much on eating right eating all the components we'll be discussing what all the components are eating balanced all of this is very very important for us for this very same reason if your sugar levels are balanced very very well of course your sleep will also be good some of you may have noticed when your sleep is irregular or when you're waking up you're turning and sleeping a lot morning fasting sugars are coming out higher right so this is also something that we do see happen next we come to the non alcoholic fatty liver disease now this is something we might see when you're checking your liver parameters you may see they are abnormal or few values are on the higher side right so this is because any excess sugar that we consume more than what is required for the body i say sugar because when your carbs are broken down you get glucose into your body glucose are nothing but sugars to the body right so when your sugars are increasing in the body what happens excess sugars which are not getting used up by the body gets converted to fat now when it gets converted to fat it will get stored in the body sometimes it can get stored at parts of your body it also gets stored at the liver so excess fat is getting stored in the liver and as it gets stored you see the liver size also increase right so that leads to non alcoholic fatty liver disease so you will see that the liver is becoming bigger looking very shiny when you do an ultrasound so these are some symptoms that you can spot that you have an alcoholic fatty liver disease again you just need to give a break to your liver and watch on your food not include a lot of glucose spiking foods and as that comes under control you notice that your fatty liver is also getting better okay so now we go into the important part of today's session which is the 10 hacks to master your blood sugar swings right so let's start with the first hack which is eat in the right order some of you who are already in the program may be familiar with this right you hear all your coaches tell please follow me in sequence right this is almost the same thing only so we start our meal with vegetables which contributes to fiber in our body then we go to our protein and then fat fat could be in the form of anything additional you are adding or whenever you cooking anything we also add in some fat like maybe for your tadka or if it's rotis we might add a spoon of ghee and prepare it as well that also contributes to fat okay or you can add a little bit of seeds or any nuts also to be a part of your plate right and lastly we come to eating our carbs or our starches so let's say for example uh, at lunch time there might be roti dal and sabzi so what do i do i start my meal with the sabzi okay so if you want to have a little bit with your roti you keep a small portion aside and then you start with your dal so have three four spoons of dal only then you go to eating your rotis along with the dal and whatever leftover sabji there is now nobody will stop you from having more sabji so please have more sabji that's more than okay for you to consume because fibers and protein help you feel very very full so after your meal when you're feeling full it is because of the protein and the fiber that you have consumed also they help to stabilize your sugars a lot more so this is the reason why we want to eat in the right order and also eat very balanced when you are eating balanced and you place your meals in the right order automatically you notice that your sugars are a lot more balanced right you won't be experiencing that uh, roller coaster that we just spoke about okay so we have also seen in studies that the glucose spikes are lowered by up to 37% just by eating in the right order So hack number two, add a vegetable starter to your meals. So this could be in the form of adding a salad also ahead of your meal, or just before you're starting your lunch. Let's say ahead of that, sabzi is also available. Other than that, I am adding in more 
fiber in the form of a salad. Now, having more greens or having more vegetables are more than okay. There is no uh, limitation to having greens because we want you to start feeling full so that you reach out lesser to your carbs. That is what we are looking at. So, it, though the hack might sound very similar to the first hack, this is speaking about having even more portion of your vegetable. So, if you are having, let's say, uh, one chapati for lunch, have almost two times of the sabji equivalent to that, right? Or you can have two big katoris of your sabji and then have your rotis, okay? So, whatever carb portion you maintain, you can continue maintaining that. If you're eating two rotis, absolutely fine, okay? But make sure your vegetable portion is on the much higher side in terms of proportion. Some of you might also be knowing that 50% of the plate must be vegetables, right? That's also what we are talking about. So, we need to have a lot more vegetables in comparison to the carbs that we are putting on our plate. So, that will also make sure we see smaller glucose spikes as much as possible, okay? So, also, this helps in making sure that you don't crave as much, right? Usually, what happens is when we crave, we never think of healthy food. We always think of the junk food that is very convenient for us to eat. So, if we are taking care of our sugar levels, our cravings are also going to become much, much lower. So, when our body is feeling full and when we have lesser cravings, when we don't end up eating more than what is required, we see good weight loss also coming. So, if you are able to maintain a good body weight, we don't have the risk of further complications also coming in. Right? Okay. So, hack 3 is about stop counting calories. Now, let me explain this a little more in detail. See, though um, some food are calorific in nature, let's say they add more calories onto your plate, but they might also help you in having or maintaining a better glucose level. For example, let's say maybe at lunch, I usually take this roti dal and sabzi, right? This is what I'm usually eating for lunch. But I see that a sugar spike is happening. So what I'm going to do is I am going to add in a boiled egg alongside it and maybe let's say four or five pieces of paneer as well. Okay, now I do understand this is going to add in more calories, but it's also increasing my protein content. Okay, and what it is going to do is also bring down my glucose spike, right? So, in comparison to the spike I had previously when I was not having these two foods, today I will be seeing it be much, much better because of the protein coming in and also eating in that sequence. I might not uh, want to eat two rotis. Maybe I'll start feeling full ahead of it also, right? So, the point is not to be counting calories. It Sometimes it gets very obsessive. How many calories does this have? Oh no, you start worrying as well, right? So focus on your sugar spikes, right? And we can always manage to do physical activity in order to push us towards a weight loss, right? When we don't have a very balanced meal, we also see that the sugar levels start coming down and there's a sugar crash. Again, what happens? We just discussed this, right? When we get a lot of cravings because of irregular sugars, we start eating more, right? And as sugar crash keeps happening, we end up eating a lot more. So sugars or the kind of uh, glucose that comes in from our food can be a little addictive at times. So the point here is at times we need to look at your glucose spike over the calories. Sometimes adding in calories, if it means it's going to make our glucose spike a lot better, then yes, then that's a good way for us to do it. Okay, so hack number four talks about flattening your breakfast crop. So by this, it means, so in general, Indian breakfast, we tend to have a more savory breakfast. We don't tend to have sweet breakfast, right? Breakfast across the world, might be, you know, bread and toast, it could be cornflakes, muesli, people might be having smoothies. So, these are things that we need to keep in mind. So, when we are having our breakfast, we should also think about balancing that breakfast, right? So, if we are, are having bread, for example, we need to add in eggs. Let's say maybe I'm having, someone just mentioned today, right? They had an egg sandwich along with vegetables or a salad on the side. That's a great way to balance your breakfast. Right? You're having your protein come in, you're having your fibers also come in. Right? 
So that is what we are looking at. We need to maybe add in more components to the breakfast in order to flatten that curve we are seeing. Right? We don't want to see a high sugar spike in the morning. And as it crashes, again, we'll start feeling hungry. And then we'll end up eating something unnecessary. Right? So try to balance your meal. And when we say this, it does not apply only to lunch and dinner. We want to start at the breakfast level. Because how you start your day paves way for the rest of the day. You will also notice if you skip your breakfast or you don't uh, have a good breakfast, you feel more hungry at lunch. You end up eating more. And then you'll get a hunger pang in the evening as well. And you'll end up eating some junk food in the evening because you're constantly hungry. So never skip your breakfast, okay? Unless you have been advised to do a fasting or for any other reason, if you are not taking a breakfast or taking a delayed breakfast, it is okay. But how you start your day is very, very important. Never miss out the opportunity to add protein onto your breakfast. Okay, because that will ensure that your sugar levels are stable right from the morning. Okay, so let's come to hack five. Here, this is something that might be a misconception for a lot of people. We hear a lot from users that, you know, jaggery is way better than sugar, right? So we, let's understand one more thing that happens. If, for example, today I'm taking a spoon of white sugar, right? We see my sugar spike going high. Let's say tomorrow I'm taking uh, a spoon of honey instead. I'm thinking honey is better than white sugar, right? So I'm taking a spoon of honey instead tomorrow. So I'll see the same kind of spike happen the next day. Okay, let's talk about jaggery then. So day after I'm taking a spoon of jaggery, right? To see that I, I, I think in my head that it's going to be a lot better. But when I'm going to see my sugar spike, it is going to be just like the white sugar spike. Right? So, to our body, it is all very similar. Our body just sees it as a simple sugar and this is how I will respond when you are giving me that simple sugar. Right? So, these are all the same to our body. So, if at all you are, uh, you know, having a sweet, let's say it's a cheat meal, you're having a small portion of sweet or you've been very, very good that your coach is allowing you to have a small portion of sweet as a part of working hard towards your goal, right? So if that is to happen, it does not matter what form of sugar you are taking because your body is going to respond the same way. The major reason why they say that jaggery is better than sugar is maybe because of the processing methodology, right? And also jaggery might have some trace minerals, a little bit of iron, copper, these may be things that we find in jaggery. But otherwise, when we are looking at it from the point of view of sugars and how they are affecting our body, it is going to be the absolutely same. So if at all, let's say you are going to have something it doesn't matter which one you pick because your body is going to respond the same way. That is what we are trying to tell you, right? So whenever you are looking at having sugars, it is going to be the same. So what is more important here is moderation, the portion that you are consuming, right? So if you're going to have a high portion, we know our body might not respond well to sugars, right? Even if I'm having a small portion, it might be a high spike, okay? But portion it out to them. Okay, and we'll also hear from Anuja when is the right time to have these things, right? So, Anuja, please uh, take it forward from here. Yes. So, I just saw a question coming in chat that what is the best time to have sweets? Abhi abhi a question I have here that sweets khane ka best time kya hota hai? Theek hai? So, the simple answer is have your sweets as a dessert and not as a snack in between your meals at all, okay? Sweet ko dessert ki tarah khaya jaye, snacks ke door pe mat khaiye, theek hai? After a meal, basically kya hota hai? We tend to do something. Let's say, if we, yeah, let's say, once your lunch, lunch is done, you will do some dishes or you'll get back to your work, okay? With that, our body also starts working. Okay, with that, it takes approximately four hours from our last bite to our body starts working and giving, you know, functions to our organs basically. Okay, during this time, 
if the sugar spike is on the higher side there are high chances that your hormones and inflammatory change, changes takes place okay because during this time the digestion happens then the sort sort you know the conversion of your food to glucose happens and the storation of that particular molecule from the food that we had happens all these things takes place once you had your meal okay so if for example let's say you take uh, let's say if you take a sweet snack with your meal you know after your before your meal that will lead to higher spike once the spike is higher as i said the hormonal and inflammatory changes will start happening the sugar spikes will be on the higher side you can see the difference here if the uh, sweet snack is taken our sugars will land our stomach empty land in our stomach when we are empty stomach then there will be a quick absorption of glucose and there will be the higher spikes but if we follow our hack one that having the starches and carbohydrates and sugars at the end then there will be a slower and smaller absorption of that particular sweet we are have, having and there will be a smaller spike which will again help you stay full for a longer time and you will not crave for food sooner later okay then next slide please yeah yeah so this is you know um as a health coach this is our favorite hack i must say that we always tell our clients whenever you're going on a function or whenever you know that you're going to have a feast today please make sure that you will have one tablespoon of any vinegar for that matter before you uh, start with your meal why it is not you know we are not asking you to uh, have it with your meal because we know it tastes a little bit sour that is for sure we are just suggesting it to mix it with some water and drink it because it is going to help you flatten your glucose spikes it is going to give you lesser cravings throughout the day and it will help you in fat burning ठीक है ये हमारा सबसे फेवरेट हैक होता है जो हम हमारे सारे क्लाइंट्स को मोस्टली बताते हैं फंक्शंस हो फेस्टिवल्स हो व्हेन आपका कोई गेट टुगेदर हो ड्यूरिंग दैट टाइम आपको यही मेक श्योर sure करना है कि आप एक टेबलस्पून कोई भी विनेगर का एक ग्लास पानी में डाल के आपके खाने से पहले ले ले ठीक है नाउ मेनी ऑफ अस यू नो गेट कन्फ्यूज की apple cider for example there are vinegars which we usually suggest and which are available in indian market is apple cider vinegar and jamun cider vinegar which be, be, you know gives us a little bit more benefit in the terms of sugar sugar so many people get confused ki apple cider bhi khatta hota hai lemon juice bhi khatta hota hai theek hai so we can take lemon juice to contribute the same get the same benefit jo apple cider hame deta hai but it is not like that okay why because apple cider or any vinegar for that matter has acetic acid okay which is you know which is formed due to the fermentation okay and lemon juice has citric acid there is no same benefit of both of this so kisi bhi time ye confusion mein mat rahiyega ki aap vinegar loge ya lemon juice loge dono ka same benefit aayega it will not give you same benefit the vinegar will do their work it will help your muscle to soak up the glucose faster from our food which is which our body is getting okay and this is how it will help us to reduce our sugar spikes and research has found that it will help by 30% to reduce your sugar spike and it will flatten the curves as compared to the uh, if you consume any meal without the uh, vinegar for that matter and this hack i will say it is not just for the feast or functions or only when you are going to have any sweet you can follow this hack even if you are having a savory snack or savory lunch but you know that you are right now having a little bit high carbohydrate meal or if you want to really work on your weight loss journey if you want to really work on your cravings and if you want to really work on your flattening the sugar spike you can go ahead and have this uh, you know try this hack for sure you just have to take this 
any vinegar let's say uh, as i said right now in the india market there are two vinegars available apple cider and jamun cider which we have tried and tested that yes this works so you can take this maybe 20 minutes before to your meal and or you can use it as a dressing also many of many time i i also tell my users if you don't like the test it in the water you can add it as a dressing in your salad so that it will help you flattening the sugar spikes afterwards next slide vidya yes the hack eight very important hack you know it is it is something that i'll give you a small example okay so uh, our bikes works on fuel the petrol so that our body also works on fuel that is glucose okay once we eat glucose we have to utilize it if we don't utilize it it is gonna stay there in your body no matter what so for example generally in this time i would like to give two scenarios when i get most of the time ki um, anuja today i have a lot of workload i cannot i was not able to move at all i was stick to my chair front in my laptop doing whatever the work coming okay but if you are having a larger meal and sitting for a longer period that is not going to help that is simply going to convert your glucose and the insulin which is getting released in your body because it has to utilize the glucose is going to get converted into your fat in your liver and muscles okay this is the simple calculation okay but when for example you know um i guess the old saying is like that my mom and dad also used to say that you should at least walk 100 steps after the meals this is a indian own saying right you should walk 100 step after the meal and honestly no one is following it no one not a single person right now is following it as much as and that is why we keep on you know reminding you did you do your post meal walk because we know that is going to help if you are doing the post meal walk if we are contracting our muscles as glucose is moving into our in uh, from our intestine to our blood stream it is going to help the muscles to utilize that glucose and not store as a fat okay so we just have to make sure ki jo glucose automatically fat mein convert ho raha hai because of no physical activity at all usko humko utilize karna hai as a energy as a fuel for our muscles our cells so that hamara sugar spikes baad mein kam aaye okay so make sure from today after your major meals after your lunch dinner make sure to walk start with 5 minutes then gradually increase it to 10 15 20 minutes how much so you ever you are able to do but start it from today you will i'll i'll give you one you know a uh, experiment to do today try it once after your lunch today don't do any walk just sit feel how you are feeling experiment ex, uh, you know just experiment that and after the dinner walk for 20 minutes and then compare it how you are feeling how is your energy levels how is your mood how is your sugars how is your food cravings all these things will immediately start giving you results so try this today today is sunday so i guess you will be having some amount of time to try this lunch ke baad koi walk mat karna baith jana you will see what is the difference between not walking and dinner ke baad acche se 20 minute ka walk karna 20 minute baad and differentiate it for your own ki how you are feeling and what is beneficial for you theek hai next slide please vidya okay very important if you have snacks if you want to have any snacks go for savory not for sweet as we dis discussed on hack 6 sweet has to be taken as a dessert not as a snack many of the people ask us ki snacks mein kya liya jaye okay if you are going to have the sweet snacks our you know our stomach is not em like we are not having it empty stomach for sure but there is a huge gap between your snack and your meal so your body is already craving for that sugar and you if you are giving that sugar to your body it is going to give you a higher spike but when you you know swap it instead of when you swap it with the savory snack okay that will give you a smaller spikes again okay and it will lead to a steadier hunger pangs you will not get hunger pangs every 2 hours every 3 hours as we say it will 
take time for one two days initially i i guess because you're not used to having the savory snacks maybe but once you'll get once your body will get used to that then it will give you a steady hunger it will not give you any hunger pangs there will be less of insulin release less of insulin release means if you are not even you don't have any time after that particular snack to walk less of fat storage in your body less activation of cravings send you know cravings in your brain as with that explained your the hunger hormones because of that whatever cravings you get it will get subside with the savory snack okay so try these hacks that even if you have any uh if you want i can give you some snacks options maybe uh if you want something if you're having a fruit combine it with some nut butter that is a good option then a boiled egg because it's high in protein it will not give you a spike at all then handful of some nuts or boiled chana this you can take these are some good options which you can consume to get the lesser insulin release into your body after the snack so that it will not give you a curves very frequently throughout the day okay next slide vidya yes my all time favorite hack i must say i guess this is all time favorite for all of us as a coaches that put some cloths on your calves as vidya explained you and i guess on the first hack and second hack that it is very important to uh combine your carbohydrates that is our chapati rice millet rotis any breakfast cereals poha le lo upma le lo sevaiya le lo whatever it is then our bakery products the bread biscuits toasts everything our fruits again the fresh fruits also and dry fruits also those under those also comes under the carbohydrate then our pasta noodles our potato sweet potato anything that is sweet your sugars your desserts your sweets everything combine it with good amount of fiber good amount of protein and good amount of fat because that is going to as with the explain the fiber is going to coat your intestine and then when the glucose is coming the glucose uptake by your body will be on the smaller side and the spikes will be on the smaller side so you have to make sure that don't only have because as as a indian we know that for the breakfast mostly you know you get poha you get upma you get idli you get dosa come from any any sides of india you usually get the first meal as a carbohydrate but you have to take that efforts to combine it with protein and carbo uh, fats and fibers so that the sugar spikes will be on the lesser side okay so when let's say you are going out for a party for example i'll give you a simple example now the mango season is coming okay mango is carbs a whole lot of carbs okay so if you will have only mango you will see a higher sugar spikes and then your in hormones inflammatory changes will take place again and the sugar spikes will take time to come back into the normal zone but if you will consume that mango with good amount of protein maybe a yogurt and chia seeds for good amount of fiber and fat this will really lead to flatten your curve with the mangoes okay so you can try that these things to flatten your curves i have given you a very real example which you can try during this mango season so yes that these are all 10 hacks which we bought you today this we have taken someone i guess has mentioned in the chat that about glucose goddess so i would like to highlight yes this we have taken from her book but why we taken it today is to give you the indian scenario of everything because whatever is mentioned on her post let's say in her everything that is from america that is us based foods our culture our dietary habits are totally different from them so that is why we cho uh, chose to present all these 10 hacks to you so that you will have our indian scenario while following everything okay yes i hope you guys have learned something and you guys have got to know why your coaches ask you to follow okay ye try karke dekh lo this might help you to uh, bring those sugars down in your cgm let's say in your glucometer let's say so ye aapko aaj pata chala hoga 
So try and talk to your coach what hack is suiting you if you have tried, not tried, what or what things you can you can try depending on your sugar levels and your progress so that they'll help you understand which you can try incorporating into your daily routine. Okay. So with this, I have a small fun game because you know, summer is coming. I want to give you uh, some ideas about the summer drinks, but we will, I'll give you it through the fun game. There are emojis I have planned for you. You just have to guess that summer drink into the chat section. So get your fingers on the keyboard and keep dropping the answers. Uh, you can move ahead with them. So I want the answers for this first emoji. Did you get to know what is this? What is this summer drink? I can see two answers. I need some more hum. Yes. Yes, I can see the correct answer coming. Yes, this is Am Panna. You can try this uh, during your summer days. If you want to avoid adding sugars, the salted Am Panna also tests very well. So you can try doing that as well. Yes, the right answer is Am Panna. Next, Vidya. Okay, this is very easy, guys. Very easy. What is the emoji saying? Yeah, we can say it as a lemonade also. Yes, it is lemon water. We can say it as lemonade. You can include it during the summer season. Just make sure you'll increase your water intake because the heat is increasing a lot nowadays, I guess, everywhere in India. So add it as your, you know, a uh, good amount of water. If you're bored, you're getting bored with water, you can add these drinks. Next, Vidya. Okay, this is a little bit tricky. So I, I'll give you a little bit extra time to guess it. What is this? What do you think it is? Okay, great, Amrita. Yes, I can see this. This was tricky for me as well. But you guys are very much good in guessing these games. Yes, this is coconut water. So you can add it into your daily routine. Or you can talk to your coach uh, about the coconut water. Because in some cases, it gives you a sugar spike. So you really have to connect with your coach if you can have it or if you not. If you cannot. Next with there. Okay. Fourth one. What is it? Very easy. Yes, Vaishali, Amla, but what is it with Amla? Yes, it is Amla, but what do you make with Amla in this summer? We are talking, yes, Amla Sharbat, right? I was waiting for that. It is Amla Sharbat. You can consume it because it is good in vitamin C. It will give you a good amount of hydration level, everything. Yes, it is Amla Sherbet. Next, Vidya. Very easy again. Most of us like to have it in the summers. Especially I like to have it in the summer. Yes, I can see Jaljira coming. Yes, it's Jaljira. It is not Jira water. It is Jaljira which will help you in digestion as well because it has mint, it has some coriander, it has some jeera, everything into it. So after your meals, you can consume it for the better digestion. Perfectly. Next. Okay, it is going to be a little tricky, but let's see who is able to guess it. Okay. I felt it is tricky, but everyone knows it is barley water. <laughs> Great. The last one, I guess. Easy. Everybody's favorite. Exactly. Everybody's favorite. Who likes it? Who don't like it? Buttermilk. Yes. So guys, sip on buttermilk. Your coach is never going to ask you stop sipping on buttermilk during the summers. So you can easily sip on buttermilk. Go ahead. You can you can add some sabja into it for a little bit fiber. Just trick it on your own. That's the, you know, that's the game. Or during the summers, you have to just keep hydrating yourself. Next. Okay. 
I guess next is the last. Yes. It is again easy because you got to know what is this boy and bat is. <laughs> yes. Imli. Imli Shahbat. Yes, right. So I guess I have given you guys pretty good ideas about summer drinks as well. So hope you have at least eight summer drinks now, which you can try. Just before adding those, have a word with your coach that what all things you can add in your sherbets and what all things you can avoid adding so that there will be no sugar spikes. Now you can stop, uh, start dropping your questions in the chat box. We are happy to take those. If there is any questions, guys, do drop in the chat. I'll read out to you, Vidya. Will that be fine? Sure. Yeah. So there is one question, how to increase weight? Okay. So I'm guessing it's not from a diabetic perspective at all yeah. here. But see, uh, it can be tricky if you are diabetic because when you're looking at weight gain, the first thing we think of is increasing our calories. And what do we think of? We think of increasing more of our carbs. Right. So in case there is diabetes also involved, talk to your coach, talk to your dietitian or your nutritionist. Look for adding in supplements to help. Because we don't want to see a very high sugar spike coming to you. Right. But increasing protein, increasing your good fats can also be very, very helpful. Right. So if you are non-diabetic, look at adding in low carbs. If you are diabetic, look at taking a protein supplement, having a lot more nuts and seeds into your diet. Okay, that should be helpful. Then it's palm sugar is okay. Every sugar for that matter is same right now. That, that was one of the hacks we discussed here, yes. right? Yes. So the it doesn't matter if it is going to be better. Remember that to your body, these are all going to be the same. It's a simple sugar. If you're going to take them, there is going to be a sugar spike. So rather focus on moderation on your portion. Let that be the guiding factor for you. Here. Yes. Uh, Archana is asking how long after the meal we can walk. I guess ideally we should be walking after 20 minutes, but it's okay if you are busy doing something, you should be doing some exercise within 70 minutes of your meal. But you have to look for what is working for you. If the, uh, you know, within 70 minutes is not working, then you have to stick to that 20 minute cycle. After 20, 30 minutes, take a walk for 10, 15 minutes. That you have to try and make, you know, just check how your sugars are doing with that. Then Suma is asking with the how long after food glucose spikes? How long after food? Glucose spikes. So that's going to vary from person to person. But what we also look at is uh, how well the sugars are settling within two hours of eating. Right? That's what we look at. For some people, as soon as you start eating, you might see the sugar spike happen. And you might see the peak come in during one hour also. For example, let's say if I'm having lunch at 2 o'clock, right? For me in particular, we might see the highest sugar spike happen around 3 o'clock. It is possible. But maybe for Anuja, let's say she's also having lunch at 2 o'clock. But for her 2.30 only, we might see the highest spike and then it comes out. So how each person's body is going to respond will be different. That is why we take a postprandial and we check if that is in case. Right? So go by the postprandial. If at all you have to check your sugar levels, go by post level. Anything else you'd like to add on the chat? I guess that is the main thing. Every person reacts differently for each and every food. So you have to see what works for you and what time your sugar is spiking up so that you can customize it according to you when you should be walking or when what you should be not including in your food. Then, yes, how much fruits we can consume? Okay. The only answer to is one fruit a day is sufficiently enough. Okay. And because that is giving you a good amount of fiber, everything, whatever vitamins we need throughout the day, that is giving you. And we are also adding salads as your meals. We are starting our meals with the vegetables. So that is going to take care of all the minerals, vitamins and everything. 
so one fruit a day is good enough again as i told if you are having any snack make sure to combine it with the fiber and protein so i have some handful of nuts with your fruit so to flatten the sugar curves after that yes then i'm searching for the questions yes uh with the prathamesh can we have vinegar before breakfast yes why not if you're having a if you want to try it how your sugar spikes are doing with that you can then okay uh, you can take this with i'll uh, read it out for you is there any specific to to control morning sugar sleep is good sleep is not a concern okay so here taking a reading around 2 to 3 o'clock can be very helpful see uh, this can be a little more complicated because there is something that happens in your body we call it the somoti effect right so what happens is in your sleep if your sugars are dipping right and what will happen we already discussed that our liver is having a glucose storage so your liver will start secreting glucose thinking that you are going into a high form. So as a result, when you are checking your morning sugars, it might be on the higher side. So understand what your body is going through. Or on the contrary, we might be also seeing your sugar levels not come down at all, but continue to increase. Right? So understanding your night sugar pattern can be very helpful. So the other, if it's not somogi effect, we could be also looking at a dawn phenomenon. That is what we call so this can be seen in people who are taking insulin sometimes. And what happens is this is a sign of stress as well to the body. You'll see that the sugars are not coming low only. But in the morning, there's a sugar spike happening. Okay. So understanding how do you differentiate. Talk to your coach or talk to your nutritionist. Try taking a reading between 2 to 3 o'clock. I mean early morning, like a.m. Right. Once if you take, if you compare it to your dinner reading and your fasting reading, you will understand very clearly what is happening. So depending on what is happening, you might have to work on your dinner or your medication, right? So, or physical activity. These could be the solutions to either of these. So try to understand where the problem is coming in by taking an early morning. Okay. So Maria, I'll list down the hacks again for you, as you said. Eat in the right order. First, your fiber, protein and fat, then your carbohydrates. Add a vegetable starter. Stop counting your calories. Flatten your breakfast curb with savory food or uh, balancing out your breakfast. Then any of the sugars are seen. They all have the same effect on your sugar levels. Pick the sweet as your dessert and not a snack. You can have vinegar before you eat. Lastly, very important. After you eat, please move and go for the savory breakfast. And again, combine your carbohydrates with proteins in fact this is the gist of all the hacks which we discussed Mahesh is asking kokum is good yes Mahesh you can take the kokum but you have to make sure is there any uh, sugar added into it because whatever kokum sherbets we get in the market these are usually added with sugar so check for that then can we have Rohi asking can we have diabetic packet snack so what kind of snack Ruhi, you are talking about? You have to check the food labels. What all ingredients there are, are there in the pack? Is there any, uh, you know, sugar sweetener has been used instead of sugar? So that you will be assured that you are having a healthy snack which will not give you any sugar spike. Then... Yes, uh, Shiv is asking... Uh, Vidya, can we drink mango shake with chia seeds? Okay, rather you have as mango. See, this is something that most of your coaches will tell you. Take the fruit as the fruit. Because when you consume as the fruit, your body is going to put in effort to break down some of the fibers. Right? If you're going to take it as a juice or a milkshake, milkshake is even worse, I would say, because you're combining more carbs onto it by adding milk. Right? So what you do, make the best of the fruit, have the fruit as is. And then you have nuts or seeds, whatever alongside it works best. Okay, we always suggest having full fruits instead of having juices or shakes. Okay. There is a question about walking. Is it immediately meal or after 
one hour. After 20, 30 minutes, it's fine. Not needed to wait for one hour because that might not work for some people. So ideal time, what we recommend is after 30 minutes. Anything you want to add with the walking with them? No, I think that's absolutely right. But see, let's say in case you're in office or you're in meetings and you're not able to maintain that gap of like 20 to 30 minutes, it's okay even if you're walking after 40 minutes or one. What is important is movement. Yes, ideally we are looking at 20 to 30 minutes. If it doesn't happen, still look at moving or having movement after the meal. That can still have an impact on your post sugars. sugars. Let's say after lunch when you're checking your sugars, you will see a good reading when you've been active compared to when you've not been active. That's why we also suggest to the clients, right, taking a break every two to three hours, moving, keeping yourself active. These are all important things because it has an impact on your overall energy levels, on your sugar levels. So movement through the day is absolutely required. Okay. Many of them are asking, can we get the slides? Yes, you will be getting the slides. You can reach out to your respective health coaches. They'll have an access to the slide and they can share those with you. And then I guess uh, there is one. Uh, can we eat kancha mango? Yes, you can. As a sherbet, if you can, yes. So there is question again uh, with their according, like related to the sugars. It's coconut jaggery. Good or coconut sugar, good. We've already discussed this. It's going to be yeah. the same as taking sugars. So work on your portions. I see a lot of questions coming in about artificial sugars. And artificial diet. sugars, yes. Postivia, corn fruit sugar, or if you're taking sugar free, it is okay. But uh, again, portion it out well. Just because it is not increasing your sugars doesn't mean you have to consume them in huge quantities. Right? So, if you're taking your tea or coffee along with a little bit of stevia, that is okay. But learn to keep a limitation or a restriction there. So, just because it is sweet and not giving you that spike doesn't mean we can keep taking it. Anything which goes beyond moderation will have an effect on your body. Right? So, look at maintaining moderation, please. Yes, there is one question coming regarding ACV. Can damage tooth enamel. If you are diluting it guys in the water, it won't. So don't have it directly. Make sure you will dilute the any vinegar for that matter. Not only ACV. Any vinegar for that matter. One tablespoon has to be diluted in one large glass of water. And then you can have it before your meals. So that it will not damage any of your tooth health, anything. Then, uh, okay, I guess... Any questions you feel with the I have missed? So I see Lakshmi asking if fats can be consumed. Consumed, yes. Fats so, can... Yes, please, Anuja. Okay, so fats, as in if you're having, you know, healthy fats, as we said, the unsaturated, that is our nuts, seeds, you can consume those, for sure. Which fat you are talking about, I'm not yet clear. This is a very... Open-ended question, fats can be consumed. You should, can you just give me a brief which fat you're talking about? Is it nuts? Is it oils you're talking about? It totally depends. There are two different answers for both of them. Okay. Can we have fruits as a meal for breakfast or dinner? You want to take it with them? You can. Fruits are best suited during your snack time. See, remember we also talked about not having sugars as snacks. Now, fruit is relatively a better snacking option. But a thumb rule that we follow whenever we take fruits, we take nuts or seeds on the side or peanut butter, almond butter, whatever you are able to get. Make sure it does not have any other sweetener added to it. Right? The reason we take nuts or seeds along with fruit is to bring down the spike post eating the food. Fruits are slightly sweet in nature. We are going to see a small spike come in after having that. So when we take nuts or seeds alongside it, maybe along with apple, let's say I'm taking six to seven almonds. Okay. So this is a better way. And you'll also notice your sugars are a lot more under control in comparison to just taking plain apple. Okay, so always pair your fruit with nuts and seeds and fruits are best suited as snacks, not along with your main meal. Yes, we did discuss one hack where it is better to take fruits as, uh, you know, uh, 
a dessert and not as a snack. So if at all you find yourself craving for something sweet, I must have something sweet. Then maybe a small piece of fruit along with your meal is okay. But never pay way for an, uh, you know, for making it a habit or a routine. It shouldn't be something you're doing on a daily basis, right? So that should not happen. Yes. Uh, how long before meals should we take apple cider? 20 minutes before your meal is good enough. Or else you can directly add it into your salad as dressing, as I discussed. Then, is it okay to have small quantities of sweet made up using natural sugars? Maybe one or half piece. As we seen in the hack six, add it as a dessert. Don't have it before your meals. Sugars always last. Fiber, protein, fats, and your complex carbohydrate first. Sugars always last when you're having any meal. Okay, there is a question with the cashews are good to increase weight in diabetes. In diabetes. Cashews, you can have them, but don't take them on a regular basis. See, the reason I say that is because having variety is always going to be helpful. Today you are having cashews, tomorrow you have almonds, the other day you have walnuts. Have a variety always when it comes to fruits, when it comes to your carbs, when it comes to your nuts or seeds. Because each food in particular has something different to offer you. For example, this is what I usually tell. Let's say if I'm taking apple, apple say, what am I going to get? I'm going to get maybe a little bit of B vitamins, a little bit of vitamin A, vitamin C, I might get. Tomorrow I'm taking an orange. I'm going to get a load of vitamin C into my body. Let's say another day if I'm taking a small portion of banana, I'm going to get lots of potassium, magnesium from it. Each food has something different to offer you. So whether it's cooking oil, anything that you look at, look at having uh, you know, a good variety. Try to be inclusive of everything that you are taking. That will be helpful. Yes, then can we eat groundnuts as a snack? It totally depends on how your cholesterols are. My simple answer would be that. If you want to go ahead with groundnuts, I'll still suggest to have a handful of almonds or let's say for that matter a little bit of walnuts that would be the good option to have instead of groundnuts as a snack what is your call on that with them absolutely see when it comes to having nuts or seeds the groundnut also comes under the nuts and seeds category so what you need to pay attention to is your quantity just because we know it's not going to spike our sugars doesn't mean we can keep consuming a lot of them, right? So when we take a lot of these, what happens is weight gain happens. So work with portion. Always work with portions. Anything that I'm missing? It's skipping dinner better. No. Don't skip any of your meals. That will lead to maybe, you know, hypoglycemia or second is that can also lead to hyperglycemia because your body has stored glu glycogen stored glucose in the form of glycogen so your body will start releasing that into your bloodstream and that can also give you a bigger spike even if you don't have any meal so don't skip any of your meals can we have tender coconut water as I said, you have to check it, what your sugars are going after that. And then you can take a call. Because tender coconut water, sometimes for some people, gives you higher spike. For some people, it won't give any spike. So it totally depends on that. What about intermittent fasting and sugar control? You want to take it with you? Intermittent fasting can be done. See, again, uh, you'll have to... Try it out and see if it is working for you. It might not work great for everybody because when fasting duration increases, for some people, sugars might start spiking. So pay attention to your body. It is something you can try. Pay attention to your body. See how your sugars are after 12 hours of fasting. Okay? And then check it after 14 hours. Also, if it is causing discomfort in the form of acidity, it is better not to go for it. Right? So, if you've already done it before, you know how I can go up to 14, 16 hours without food, go for it. But if you're facing any discomfort or if you're not able to withstand or sustain it, then probably it is not for you. So, give it a go, check how your sugars are and then or talk to your coach. See how 
the duration of fasting is affecting your sugars. For some people, 12 hours might not make a major difference. But when you do it for 14 to 16 hours, you might see the sugars come under control. Right? So pay attention to your body. See how your sugar levels are. Always monitor your sugar levels. That's why we emphasize on taking readings of the glucometer. When you pay attention, you understand a lot more about your body. You'll understand what is working for your body, what is not working for your body. Right? So when it's intermittent fasting, try it and see how comfortable you are if you're able to do it. Uh, see, intermittent fasting is not something you should do for one day and see results. It's something that you will be doing continuously for a good period of time. Right? So try it out and see how it is suiting you and your sugar levels, please. I guess we have answered most of the questions. Should we add basin to millets? Yes, you can. Okay. Anything that you feel we have missed? Uh, no, I saw a lot of questions on when to take readings as well. So we'll probably quickly just uh, go through that. So when we are talking of postprandial reading, that is post your breakfast or post lunch or post dinner, what we do is there are two ways you can take it. One, from your first bite of food, you calculate two hours and you take it. That's the first method of taking it. The second is once you complete your meal, from there one and a half hours or 90 minutes, you type it and you take it. So these are either ways you can take it. So if you are a fast eater, probably it might not alter too much. But in general, when you take your time and eat, yes, there is a difference. So either from when you start your food, you can calculate and take two hours. Or from when you complete your food, you can take 90 minutes or one and a half minutes. Great. So, I guess that's it. Okay. So, how you can guys drop in your feedbacks that how did you like the sessions and was it helping? Was it helpful for you? And how you, you are going to incorporate these hacks into your daily routine. Okay, there's one more question that came in. My question is not answered about mixing food and food. So we talk okay. about just a while ago, sir. So what we said was, if you have a need to have something sweet alone and with that craving is not going, you can have like two, three pieces of fruit right after your meal. But otherwise, we do suggest combining the two. Because, see, from your carbs, there is going to be a sugar spike that is going to happen, right? So, when you're going to add in fruits also alongside that, you're going to see your spike go higher, right? So, we don't want that. That's why we place fruits as snacks along with nuts or seeds. So, mid-morning time or evening time. Evening time is better suited because the gap between lunch and dinner is quite long. So, that time you can look at taking fruit along with nuts or seeds. That's a good option. Yes. I can see one more, one more question. Uh... Regarding stevia, yes, stevia you can use, but again, you know, in the market, there are types which are present, you know, stevia drops and all those things. The safest way to use stevia is stevia leaves. You can get the dried stevia leaves. If you feel that is really strong for you, just dilute it in the water, just boil it in the water and use that water as a sweetener. And that will help you give you a little bit of sweetness into your tea, in your you know, into your coffee, everything. So stevia can be used again when you are using it or which type you are using it matters. So make sure if you want to go with the safest type, go with the stevia leaves. Great. I guess then we will see you again on the next session. Next Sunday, we will come back with a good topic and we'll see you again. We can end the session here today. Thank you, Vidya. Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you, you guys Anuja. for your Thank time. You. We'll see you again. Bye. Have a good Sunday. Enjoy your Sunday. Guys. And start using these hacks. Yes. <laughs> Bye.